Hey everybody, Brad with Full Spectrum Survival. This day has been a long day, a long time coming. We got the idea for this short film uh, a couple of weeks ago, maybe about two months ago, and it just kind of sat there and boiled in our minds. We wanted to tell the story of someone who wasn't prepared. Uh, so many people in our community understand fully that during a disaster, millions of people uh, in a large region or a long duration emergency, millions of people become uh, shocked and placed into a crisis setting in which they all have to do things that they never thought possible before. Uh, mothers watching their children go hungry will be forced into really uh, dangerous positions. Uh, they'll be forced to steal. Fathers will be forced to steal. Uh, they'll be forced to confront armed individuals who are trying to themselves survive. It's going to be a precarious position for everybody involved. And if we look towards places where crisis events are happening right now, if we look towards Yemen, if we look towards Syria, look towards uh, Venezuela and Brazil, some areas of Asia, we see in India, we see that any time social, the social fabric starts to rip, people who weren't ready, who weren't prepared, become casualties of personal integrity disasters, personal integrity crisis events. And the, we have these veils on our eyes as individuals, as humans, and we say, this could never happen. Or we say, uh, I would never do this. But then as a human, we are programmed to survive. As an animal on earth, every animal is programmed to survive. Every animal will fight for its kin. Every animal will fight for its pack. Every animal will uh, steal food from another animal. We will do all of these things. And so as humans, we're no different. And we wanted to tell the story of an unprepared person, uh, a lone wolf, because a lone wolf is a, uh, a pattern of personal preparedness that many find themselves in, uh, especially if you don't have family or you don't have friends or a social group of individuals who are also interested in not being a casualty of a disaster. So we wanted to tell the story of a lone wolf uh, who wasn't prepared. And I think you'll find that. Um, we did an initial screening with some uh, pretty trusted individuals, uh, very low key, but trusted individuals, uh, not in our group and just people, hey, take a look at this. And in that screening, we found that a lot of people, uh, I don't want to say like uh, keyboard survivalists, um, you know, oh, you shouldn't do that. Oh, uh, why would you do that? Uh, that person shouldn't have done that. Of course, that's the story. It's the story of the unprepared in just one variation um, of things that might happen. Now, we live in a just-in-time delivery system here in the West. The trucks go to the store every single day, multiple times per day, refilling those shelves. There's very limited stock in the back of the stores. When the trucks stop running, the food stops running. If a disaster takes place and makes it dangerous to go to the store, you stop getting food with what's in your pantry at this moment. For a lot of people, that's going to leave them with days of food. So say you have three to six days worth of food as an individual. What do you do after that? Of course, you go out and find some if you can. So I kind of wanted to set this up. We had thrown this back and forth with our Patreon members last night to see if uh, we wanted to kind of introduce the scene. And after some initial thought and looking back at it, I think we did want to just so that you knew that we were setting the scene of an unprepared individual doing the wrong things and finally having to uh, come to terms with the new reality. So Kelly and I hope that you enjoy this video. A uh, special thank you to all of our Patreon members for making it possible.
Infrastructural terrorism is continuing to be reported from a number of state-operated radio news agencies in the United States of America, and the citizens of that country continue suffering ongoing civil disturbances affecting mostly urban and densely populated areas. Citizens in the affected regions are being told to shelter in place as the authorities work to bring these social disturbances under control. There are reports of food riots taking place in Miami, Florida, New York City, Dallas, Texas, and across California. Residents in rural areas are reporting extreme food and medicine shortages as they enter their sixth day of delivery failures within the country. We will continue to update the broadcast as more information becomes available. Please write down this station address on a piece of paper and tune in to the World News Broadcast upon the hour. This is Michael Rickson signing off for the World News Broadcast.
Hold on, I don't want any trouble. Just add you, I'm, I'm not armed. You can put the gun down. I'm just hungry. I do have some items for trade. I have some, uh, I have some bullets. I see you have a 22. Come on, just, just some. Okay, okay. I'm sorry. Well, that was the unprepared, just one story, uh, just one possible scenario of a lone wolf or an individual in a disaster setting and not being prepared for a long duration emergency. 
states across the United States, every government of the world tells their people to prepare. They don't put an emphasis on this because they don't want the individual uh, being scared because you're supposed to be able to rely on the government to come to aid. You're supposed to be able to call 911, get a police officer to your door, and get an ambulance to your door, uh, get food on the shelves. These are the reliances. These are what people pay the taxes for. This is why governments make their money, because they're supposed to be there and be prepared themselves. But in a disaster, that breaks down, and you're not able to rely on the government anymore. You call 911, and so does everybody else, and it breaks down. Uh, this, it's not safe for the truck drivers to get to the store. They break down. The facilities that pack the food, they don't have power or it becomes unsafe. They stop working. It breaks down very quickly. And in a lot of cases, sheltering in place is going to be the only option for a lot of individuals, especially in a social disruption. And so if you're in a social disruption and it's not safe to go to the store, you're stuck with what you have. And that's what this story was about. Uh, as far as the after action review, the individual in this, the unprepared person that I played, uh, had a little bit of food. As you can see, the entire scene starts off with a, a little bit of food creation. Um, we didn't feel we needed to show the entire food pantry, but if your power goes out and you can't run your refrigerator, you have to eat or spoil what's in there. Uh, if you have just a small cupboard with some food items, you're going to be comfortable for a couple of days. But that goes quick. Uh, if you don't store staple foods in bulk, those canned foods are going to last you, you know, a can a meal. So three meals a day, especially if you're working, if you're walking outside, if you're doing things, cutting down trees, collecting uh, firewood. It goes very quickly. And so by day, we decided by around day 18, there was going to be some desperation. And that's what caused the individual to go up to the trailer and try to make contact with somebody. Uh, it can be assumed that the unprepared lone wolf uh, is in a rural setting. If we look at the food crisis numbers of our planet, individuals, civilians of our planet who are in a food crisis right now, the majority of them are in rural settings. Uh, that means they don't have access to local infrastructure. They don't have access to uh, backup delivery systems, anything like that. You're kind of stuck with what you have. So the lone wolf tried hunting. That didn't work. Uh, tried scavenging for food. Not much available. Uh, it could also be presumed that maybe he had found some here or there because between day 12 and day 24, a lot takes place. That's 12 additional days. Uh, a lot of personal fatigue, a lot of mental fatigue. And so the unprepared individual sought other ways to, uh, to persevere sought other ways to survive. I have a friend who lives in Turkey uh, and he's over here at the States for the meantime. Animals uh, during times of hunger, they do not last on the streets. Uh, I was talking with Breakaway and thank you Breakaway for doing that audio uh, part in the short film. <clears throat> His wife works with animal control and Megan uh, knows full and well that uh, strays will become a problem during a disaster. And then soon a, a sort of a relief system for people who are unable to find other food, because just like humans rely on the government, animals in our social fabric rely on humans for the most part, especially ones that are accustomed to human counterparts. And so they'll come up to humans and they'll uh, look for shelter and look for safety and look for food in humans. And a lot of humans will be forced to uh, coerce that animal into a trap setting, dispatch it, and use it for food. Uh, it's definitely something you know that the average person doesn't want to think about right now. So we wanted to tell a little bit of that story that uh, you know our loved creatures, if it's you or the creature, it will become you. Uh, a lot of people will say, I couldn't do that. And some people might make that decision that they just 
wouldn't do that and they themselves would starve. But the human mind has a way of overcoming that emotional attachment. And that's really a danger for our community. What other things will the human do uh, to survive a disaster? Special thank you to all of our Patreon members for making the short film possible. Uh, and thank you guys for watching. If you had some ideas, uh, let me know in the comment box. Did this short film make you think? We kept it really slow paced. Uh, there is a, it's a more visual story. Um, and we wanted it to be that way. We wanted to really make the individual think while they're watching what are they doing there? Why are they doing that? What would I be doing there? You shouldn't be doing that. If you thought some of those things, then it got the point across exactly how uh, how we wanted to portray it. Let us know in the comment box below if you uh, if you saw the end coming, uh, if you thought about it. Uh, did you think halfway through it? That's what I would have done. You've got food right there. Guys, as always, from Kelly and I to you and yours, please stay safe and keep watch.